All right, students. So today we are going to learn more about hydrocarbons, how to name and draw complicated hydrocarbons with alkyl groups. So let's get started. Uh, please make sure to have your organic chemistry packet and reference table in front of you as we go through the lesson. So let's try to name the following hydrocarbons. Please pause the video and try to name it by yourself and then play the video again to check if you got it right. So for the first compound, I realized it's a hydrocarbon because we only have hydrogens and carbons. And then I realized I have four carbon and total of eight hydrogens. So if you look at reference table Q, you would realize that the total number of hydrogen in this example is exactly double than the number of carbon atoms and therefore it has to be an alkene where the suffix would be E N E again the number of hydrogens in this example is exactly double than the number of carbon and therefore it's an alkene since you have four carbons in total if you use reference table P for prefixes the prefix for this organic compound would be but, and therefore the name would be butene, right? Again, we are going to use reference table Q and P to identify the name of a hydrocarbon. So if you count the number of carbons from your left side to your right side, the double bond is in between your first and second carbon, and therefore the name is going to be 1 dash butene. The number 1 in this case represents that the double bond which is in your first carbon. So for this compound, even though the double bond is between first and second carbon, we cannot name this compound as 2 butene. Again, we are not allowed to name the compound as 2-butene because we always have to pick the lowest possible number to represent the location for an unsaturated double or triple bond. So again, remember, always pick the lowest possible number. Therefore, if you have an option between 1-butene or 2-butene, in this case, the double bond is between first and second carbon and therefore we will go with the name with 1-butene or just butene. If someone is counting this compound from right to left, you can see that the person might make a mistake by assuming that this compound is 3-butene or 4-butene. So if you're counting from the right side, obviously it cannot be 4-butene you might assume that this is 3-butene, which is also wrong. And this is the reason it is extremely important for us to count from both sides, left to right and from right to left. Whichever side gives you the lowest possible number for the unsaturated double or triple bond, that's the side you should pick. So in this case, we had an option between 1-butene 2-butene, 3 or 4-butene. We pick the lowest possible number. For the first option, if you look at the green numbers from left to right, I had an option between 1-butene and 2-butene when the double bond is, was in between carbon 1 and 2. So I picked 1-butene because that's the lowest number. If I was counting from right to left, I would have gotten 3-butene or 4-butene my first preference would have been 3-butene but then again that is also going to be wrong because you should have counted from left to right in this case instead of counting from right to left. So always count it from both sides to understand where the location of the double or triple unsaturated bond is. We're going to talk more about some practice questions so that the concept becomes much more clear to you. For the second question, we also have four carbons and eight hydrogens. So this is also an alkene. 
the name should end with E N E since I have four carbons. Therefore, the prefix would be but. So the name would be butene. However, butene means one butene, where the double bond should be in between the first and second carbon. Here, I notice that the double bond is somewhere in the middle. And that cannot be one butene. So we have to reconsider the name and we have to come from left to right and from right to left to figure out which side gives us the lowest possible number. So if I'm counting from left to right side, the double bond is in between the second and third carbon and therefore the name should be 2-butene instead of 3-butene. Again, if, it, if the double bond is between second and third carbon, you always pick the lowest number and therefore the name should be 2-butene. Let's take a look at the same exact compound and let's count from right to left and to see if there is any difference in terms of the name. In this case, if I'm counting from right to left, the name is still remain as 2-butene because the double bond is still in between the second and the third carbon. So it should be 2-butene. The last example is also similar to our first example and the second example where we have four carbons and eight hydrogens. Therefore, the name should be butene. However, if I count it from left to right, it would be 3-butene. But I always need to check by counting it from the other side. So if I count it from right to left, my double bond is in between the first and second carbon and therefore the name should be 1-butene. So if you have an option between 1-butene and 3-butene and the double bond seems to be on your left side or on your right side the first between the first and second carbon you should always and always select the lowest possible number and therefore the correct name would be 1-butene or you can simply write butene you don't have to write 1 because we have to assume that it is going to be between first and second carbon if there is no number written for an organic compound you should pause the video and practice the following compounds and then play the video to check your understanding at this point. Since we have five carbon, the prefix would be pent. We have 10 hydrogens, which is exactly double compared to the number of carbons. The suffix would be E and E, so the name should be pentene. But if I just write pentene, that means the carbon is between, in between my first and second carbon. So if I count it from left to right, the name pentene would be correct because the double bond is in between my first and second carbon. So you can write just pentene or you can write one dash pentene and both of them is going to be considered as a correct answer. For the second question, we also have five carbons and 10 hydrogen. So the name should be pentene. But the difference is, for the second question, we do not have the double bond in between the first and second carbon. So if I count it from left to right, it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it seems like the double bond is in between second and third carbon. So I have to pick the lowest number and the name is going to be 2-pentene. If I count it from right to left, The double bond appears to be in between third and fourth carbon, so the name would be 3-pentene. However, we should always select the lowest possible number to identify the location of the unsaturated double or triple bond. And therefore, the correct answer is going to be 2-pentene and instead of 3-pentene. For the third one, again, we have C5H10, so that's in pentene. 
pen because you have five carbons and if you count it from left to right it seems like the double bond is between third and fourth carbon so therefore I would go with three dash pentene you should not pick four dash pentene because you always need to pick the lowest possible number however if I count it from right to left this would become two dash pentene So I have to go with the lowest possible number and for the third one it seems like 2 dash pentene is the correct answer. Again, you have to count from both sides. Count from left to right and right to left to identify which side gives you the lowest possible number for the location of the unsaturated double or triple bond. Again, for the example given in this slide, if you count it from right to left, you would get 2 pentene versus if you count it from left to right, you would get 3 pentene. So you have to go with the lowest possible number and therefore the correct answer is going to be 2 pentene. For the next one, we have 6 carbons in total, therefore the prefix would be hex. We have a triple bond, therefore the suffix would be Y N E. So hex sign. But if you count it from left to right, your triple bond is in between second and third carbon. So therefore the name should be two hex sign. If you count it from right to left, your triple bond is going to be in between fourth and fifth carbon. Therefore the name might appear to be four hex sign. If you have an option between 2 hex sign and 4 hex sign, you should go with the lowest possible number. In this case, the correct answer would be 2 hex sign. So what is the rule? Always assign double, triple, or any functional groups the lowest possible number in that compound. So always pick the lowest possible number. Let's talk about alkyl groups. Alkyl groups usually have one less carbon, uh, one less hydrogen than any carbon group of hydrocarbons. So for example, methane hydrocarbon has one carbon and four hydrogen, CH4. So methyl group would have one less hydrogen, meaning instead of having four hydrogen, you will have three hydrogens. This is not a minus sign. It's an open bond. This bond will be used.